Sorry, Maka, it's a great pleasure to be here. I think I wasn't uh, speaking in front of students maybe for 20 years, so for me it's uh, quite new. Uh, but uh, I, I, think, I think the development of any country or nation starts with education. So I think you are the future. So for me, it gives a great pleasure to uh, speak in front of you today. I mean, uh, I, I can't say I, I have all the technical knowledge uh, that uh, Vojbaka has uh, in terms of uh, business con concepts, etc. because I'm not a BA, uh, business administration uh, uh, like student. I was always political science. And I think you can feel the way I kind of approach things is, is more from political philosophy perspective. But uh, I, I think a lot of my knowledge comes from like uh, philosophical kind of concepts. But uh, uh, I, I, I can probably just, uh, it's like free jazz, right? Yeah. I didn't prepare for this because uh, oh, yeah. I had no time. So I will probably, I just want to uh, kind of uh, maybe divide the lecture into three parts where I will probably in the first part, I want to talk a little bit about your uh, development, education, uh, and, and your learning, uh, which I believe uh, will help you succeed in future. Then maybe I will talk more about my uh, recent uh, experience with uh, what Volibaka said in terms of attracting investment to Uzbekistan and sort of preparing uh, necessary conditions for investors to come to Uzbekistan. And in the third part, since very recently I left government, Maybe I will speak more about uh, private business and consulting that I'm now trying to develop and what challenges I'm facing there in private business as well. So roughly we will divide the lecture into three and then maybe 10 minutes I'll leave for questions. Um, what, what, I, what I mentioned about your, why I believe whatever you do, here I will probably write also self. So whatever you do, this, this will be fundamental in your success. So, you know, it's like, you know, Jack Ma, right? Jack Ma? You know, Jack Ma said, I mean, I don't fully agree, but, but he said something like, uh, until 20, you need to study as much as you can. And from 20 to 30, you need to find a boss that you will follow and learn from. From 30 to 40, what you learned with your boss in a private corporate setting, whatever, you need to apply in your own business. And then 40 to 50, you need to develop your business. And then 50 to 60, I think he said, you need to like teach. And 60 plus, you need to travel. But roughly, that, that should, that, that, there are some things that I would kind of twist. You can also open a company when you are 20, if you are confident enough. But generally speaking, a lot of knowledge that you will apply from now till you are 60 will come from this, from this, you know, from each other, from Holibaka, from university, from self-learning, from internet, from books, etc. So how you succeed here will probably determine a lot of your success later. That's what I know from my kind of uh, experience. And here, what you need to understand is, you know, out there, everywhere, there is a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge, right? You need to, to understand how to sort of get it. First of all, you need to be passionate about something. You know, you need to kind of focus and study a lot, etc. A lot of this knowledge you will come, you will get from, I don't know, from books, from internet, from university, from your colleagues, etc. But to get all of this, you need to kind of learn, and this is what university will help you, how to think, okay? How to think. Probably you, you, you have a lot of like critical thinking classes, no, and strategy classes, how to sort of develop your ideas. Ideas is very important. Your ideas will come mostly from the body of knowledge that you have, and the knowledge you will get from books from everywhere. But if you kind of stop this process, I don't think you will actually succeed very much in the later stages. If you take Warren Buffett, 80% of his time, he's not looking at stocks, he's just reading books. You know, classical, 
modern newspapers. That's all he does. He doesn't even have a computer. All he does is a, a books, newspaper, etc. Why? Because this, this helps him to succeed. And this will also equip you. You know the word equip? I don't know how it's in, in Uzbek. This will uh, equip you with the skills and knowledge that later on and actually through, throughout your life, because the, the brain, brain is, like a, is like a muscle, okay? If you don't train it, it will be, no, it won't, it won't be strong. So, so this you have to do probably your entire life, but now is the most critical time for you to do this. Because in your next stage, when you go into career, when you go into career and in liberal economics, you know that what's the, what's the main principle of capitalist economy? Basically, hmm? competition, exactly, competition. And people are ready to compete all the time. If you are not equipped with skills, can you compete? Nah, probably not, you know, you will start with some small time jobs, but what Jack Ma said, that means between, I don't know, 10 and 20, you didn't study. So if you want to compete, you need to have ideas, knowledge, skills to succeed, right? I mean, obviously, you shouldn't stop at, at uh, like Jack Ma said, at 20. I would say never stop. Always learn new things, languages, cultures, new skills, or I don't know cooking, traveling, etc. So this whole thing kind of adds to your development that will help you compete in a career. You want to be better than somebody else, right? And this kind of natural uh, selection will help you be, you know, one step uh, like better and then you will probably, I don't know, some of you want to buy a Ferrari or somebody wants a big house or a private jet, you want to travel. I don't know, you probably have a lot of uh, Kind of, which is fine. More material things that you want to achieve. You don't want to, all of you want to be Tibetan monks, I, I guess, right? Uh, that you like, you don't need clothes or anything like that. So, so it's okay to be competitive, to succeed, because with success, you will get, you'll attract more capital, more money, more interest from others, etc. You'll be popular. Maybe you'll be a star, etc. So, so this process is very important. Uh, but the knowledge that you get, I mean, this is probably like another lecture on how to think. So you need to always have critical thinking. This is very important. Critical thinking will help you question everything. Everything that you are taught, even, even what I say now, you can question. It's fine. You know, question and doubt everything. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question because... If you question and doubt, you will never stop. You will never stop finding out more, learning more, going after more knowledge, and that more knowledge will, will, will bring you more expertise. Okay? So this process will never will doesn't don't take everything for granted. Whatever you hear out in the world, and there is a lot of information, especially currently with social media, somebody says something, you don't have to believe. You can go through this. Cycles of, is it really so? How is it? Like, is there evidence to support this, etc. Et and then overall, you will kind of establish a certain kind of body of knowledge that will help you to develop kind of more stronger, let's say, views and then sometimes opinions about something. All right, it's, it's quite important. Otherwise, you will not be able to sort of develop your own, uh, I would say, value system. Okay, it's important to have a value system that you a value system is something that you base your actions upon this is also very important i'll come back to this to value system okay which it all comes from sort of critical thinking and then knowledge development that you kind of develop how do you know that you know something because you arrived at it after questioning after learning after reading after understanding you know big leaders philosophers politicians etc etc Values are important. I will come back to this. So, um, as I said, it's important that you, you always keep self-developing, self-development, knowledge, 
books. These things have to always continue in your life. Without that, I don't think you will be very successful. You, you can probably quit university now, like some people, some IT guys do at, I don't know, Stanford. But there's probably another one million guys who didn't succeed, okay? So you can do that, it's no problem. But this is a conventional way of how to progress. And for now, we don't really yet have universities like Stanford yet, which kind of will generate those type of, you know, but I hope in future we will have, maybe British University will, will have those kind of unique, you know, people that, that, that can jump. After this, they can jump straight. In, in 20 years, they can immediately go jump to the top. Uh, this is what I think is important to always keep in mind, you know, always learn, etc. Now, when you, when you start your, your career, and this is where you probably uh, want to stay within uh, business, or what is the, where do you usually plan to go to after university? Do you have any kind of plan? Who wants to do what? Yeah, what do you want to do? I want to go to investment banking. Investment banking, it's good, that is great. Who else wants to do what? Government or teaching or so, own business? So they should start from the second year. Second year, okay. Finance, marketing. Uh, For now, they are, they are still uh, in the development kind of stage, okay. So, if we come to career, I mean, I, I, I will speak about career. And uh, for the past, uh, I, I came back to Uzbekistan in 2019. Like, I was also abroad for many years. Uh, for about 19 years, 19 or 20 years. And I came back, I, I was uh, working, uh, first I was working at the Minister of Investment, Foreign Trade at the Investment Promotion Agency. Then I was working uh, on this street. There is an agency for information and mass communications where we were developing a kind of uh, informational uh, background and sort of uh, coverage of what's happening in Uzbekistan in the last four or five years so that investment bankers come to us. So we, we wanted to, to show that we are ready for investment and everything else. And then I worked, uh, then I worked in the state assets management agency where, where we were privatizing uh, government assets to private sector. You know, you probably know already that uh, less government, more private sector, more prosperity, more or less. You know, if you move from state economy to private economy, there should be less government. I will come back to this. And uh, most recently, I'm now consulting on uh, project financing in the energy sector, and then investment migration. Maybe somebody knows what investment, but I, I can come back to this as well. Uh, and also developing my own private business. So when you come to, to this active stage of your career, right? When you want to uh, attract capital, when you want to develop your own business, there is a whole new uh, set of uh, skills and challenges that you need to have. Technical, that you will learn here, you know, in terms of financial analysis, probably they will start learning sometime soon. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, legal analysis and then tax, probably will also have any business or any actually country has a set of norms, set of rules that define how this business or country functions, okay? And for you to be able to choose where to invest, uh, I don't know, or who to partner with, you need to understand this kind of uh, technical side of, of business. This ideas will give you uh, intuition of which sphere to go to. But when it, when it comes down to money, to private capital, you know, equity, uh, that always any, any money, any investment is linked to um, risk. Risk of losing that investment. You probably understand, no? So, so in order to not to lose money, which you don't want, you want to accumulate money, you will need to be um, analyzing kind of risk. You need to have always risk analysis. It doesn't matter if it's on the level of a country or if it's on the level of a company. So when investors come to Uzbekistan, they want to understand Uzbekistan's investment climate. 
So what does investment climate consist of? What do you think? Political system of the economy country. What does it mean, political system? Like, let's say the stability of the, let's say, the government in the country may be case for the investors to analyze. Is there any stability of, let's say, the, the, the control of the government or the businesses or the other? Control of government over businesses. I mean, mo mostly he, he, you, you get it right. Uh, so, 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 so they want to invest in countries that are politically stable. There is no war. There is no conflict. There is some sort of a projection of peace over next, I don't know, five, ten years. They do like, they do like in a more like a more kind of stable setting. But what else? What else do they think of when they want to invest? Political stability? Yes, please. Taxes is important, very important. How easy is it to open and How is okay, okay, political stability is, is very important. Taxes. And then you mentioned how, how easy it is to open business, etc. Yeah, procedures. I think there was there was a World Bank had this uh, rating which is now closed. Yeah, doing business, doing business report. I don't know why, I mean, it, uh, it, it got closed because it was, I don't know, it was like manipulated or something. But uh, that was a very good indicator of where any country is in terms of doing business for investors. Probably there was like political stability, taxes, etc., etc. I think we were at level 69, we were always, uh, we were promoting that very much because we jumped from, I don't know, 20 places in the last like five years. It was quite a jump. But I think Georgia is in top 10, for instance. Yeah. I mean, when, when, the, when, the, when, the, uh, when this uh, rating was still, uh, was still there. So what else? What else is important? Taxes? What are the financial markets of the country? Let's see. Capital markets? Yes. The capital markets is important. Why do you need to develop capital markets? Because as the naturally investors are investing their capital into the country, so they, sh they have to be sure that there's a quite trust in this in the, in the capital market to increase this capital capital even more. Let's see. Yeah, this this. So when you move from uh, when you move from state-owned uh, economy to uh, to private entrepreneurial economy, this is where you raise money, or this is where you multiply your money. So a very developed capital markets allows. Uh, your investment, your equity to come to a country and then, and then in this market multiplied, especially in developing markets, like I don't know, until recently, I don't know, Russia, uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, the, the rate of return can be very high because the, the, the country is developing very fast. So you understand what frontier markets are, right? Frontier, so there is like a general known markets in the West, and then there are markets that are on frontier, a bit, just a bit right outside, but they create more opportunities. Why? Because there is less competition there. Less competition. All the companies haven't established their businesses there yet. It's meaning that, you know, it's untouched market and with the right system, it can generate very big profits. That's how we were also kind of promoting, you know, come to Uzbekistan, the market is still untouched, we don't have McDonald's. If you open a business, you can become a millionaire very fast because you don't have to compete. I don't know, I think Burger King is opening here, etc. But this is, this is important. What else? More transparency. Transparency? What's, what's, what's about transparency? Can you, can you elaborate? Transparency about what? Information about entry and financial reports. Okay. There should be government assurance that the investor makes sure that he can get money back or in case something's going to happen to government, government shouldn't take his assets, you know, like the same happened with the Turkey before in Uzbekistan. So. Expropriation. Yes. And about the currency also, I think it's one of the issues. So the investor is not sure in which currency he's going to get back his money. Sometimes in Uzbekistan it's difficult. So what does this, why is this important? That somebody doesn't take your business? What's one of the most fundamental concepts of uh, 
Capitalism. Private property. Exactly, private property. This is very important. You want to make sure that your property is well protected, okay? By this political system. Private property in the West is like sacred. So when you bring your equity, first thing you think, okay, I don't want anybody to take over my land, my buildings, my company, my ideas, just because somebody in the political system decides, okay, now you brought your business, now it's mine, bye-bye. But to do that, to do that and to have investor confidence, okay, investor confidence, you need to develop a system where all this is understandable, political stability, laws, understandable, so that businesses that come, came here in the last four or five years, they grew, you know? So if, if, you, if you invest in Kyrgyzstan and you become rich, we will look at you and we will say, okay, he, he became rich in Kyrgyzstan. What's happening in Kyrgyzstan? I want to go there because it seems like this is working. My capital is growing. I want to go to that market, right? So this investor confidence about the market is very important. There are a lot of ratings, but generally speaking, this is generated through track record, okay? Track record or the so-called success stories. More success stories you have, more interesting your market for investors. More businesses come here, more will follow because everybody wants to follow the money. All right, everybody wants to follow very high return, not 1%, not 0.5, 10%, It's interesting. Capital will move where there are good conditions to grow. Okay, so it is true, it's, it's upon us and our government and our political system, our tax system, to create certain conditions for business, for capital, especially foreign capital that comes with a lot of fears. You know, uh, your market, uh, yeah, we're not sure yet, uh, etc. So do you think our system is already very attractive for foreign investment? I don't think so, sir. Because you see, I think the, in terms of the, let's see, the finance, let's see, we don't have a solid developed financial market that can satisfy all the investors that are coming from. You, we, don't, we don't need to have, you know, we, I mean, you, you, you have, uh, you have uh, Wall Street, but at that level of development, there are only very few, I would say, uh, financial markets like that. I mean, Dubai wanted to develop into a proper financial market, but it's, it's, it's not year there yet, I would say. I mean, you have London, it's true. Then you have Japan, Hong Kong, but it's very difficult. Investors don't expect us to have developed financial markets that quickly. Talent. So, so you mean you, you need to have, you need to have uh, human capital. Human capital is very important, and this is where British Management University is important. So you need to have human capital. You guys, you know, when 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 uh, or I don't know, maybe uh, foreign specialists come to the country. You know, usually, uh, usually. They say trade follows investment. First, when they come to a country, maybe they don't want to invest. First, they say, let's trade a bit. Let's see how reliable you are. If we can build trust. Building trust is very important. Build trust, okay? So this, you can apply in any, any career or sphere or personal relationship as well. Trust will help you build a certain relationship upon which you can act. You're not afraid so much. You know what to expect, okay? You know what to expect. So, so you know that if we are in a trustworthy relationships, relationship, I know that you will go straight 
in two, three years, 